Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Do you guys have Carl Stort systems in your facility? Maybe some old NDS displays that are getting a little worn out? I got a few things to show you that might get you back up and going if you ever have a failure, like somebody damages one of the ports on your monitor. So let's take a look. I got one right here. We're gonna tear into it and I'm gonna show you some of the insides and some tips and tricks on it that'll get you back up and going. Let's do this. All right guys, here we have an NDS display. This is the back of it. I've already got the rear cover off and I've got a lot of the screws out. So not only do you have screws around the perimeter of this plate, but you also have the hold down screws at the corners of all your ports, like your DVI, your VGA, and your serial port. You have to remove all those hold down lugs and you know put them off to the side. You've got your visa bracket. So you take your visa bracket off then this top cover has to come off. We have a four pin power cord that's gonna come out. And then you have this guy right here. This is gonna be your external fiber. So with the imports on this, you normally have SDI, S-Video. You have DVI, VGA, and then you also have fiber. But guess what? You can see, look at how my ports are all damaged. You see that? Damaged, damaged, damaged. So this monitor here, they're thinking that they're they're down and out, right? Not necessarily. You have two options. This right here is the secret hidden port. See that one right there? That is where this fiber connects to. Plugs in right here. So if you have a monitor that you want to get back up and going, you have two options. One option is to find a TX. This here is an RX, a receive. You need a TX and you can have a fiber connect from here to your TX someplace in your video tower. And then you just connect your DVI to your TX. It goes into fiber, comes into here, gets converted back to DVI. That is your one option. Your other option is to go ahead and disconnect this guy right here and actually run a little pigtail of a DVI right out through the outside of your monitor and they can connect to that. This is another DVI import. And a lot of people don't know that. So currently it does have a fiber connected, so you would have to select fiber, you know, from your on-screen menu, but it is still a DVI port. So you can take this guy off, connect the DVI cable, and your display is back up and going, at least temporarily. So let's take a look at a couple other things. I have this plate here, that's your IO plate. All right, so you can see where your power comes in right here, and this is all your power phases. You have uh, down here, this little guy right here, this is your uh, ribbon cable for your buttons, which comes up into the side over here. You have a little video processing board. Take a look at this guy. So if you see, this guy here is acting as a heat sink for this microchip right here. So that's thermal pad, that's a hefty little thermal pad too, look at that guy. So that bonds these two together. And this right here is actually where your video signals come from your IO board. They get processed by this guy, maybe scaled, and then it comes here to your video cable and goes into your display. So this is your power to your little microprocessor, and then this is your video. This one right here is going to be your power that goes in for your backlighting. So you see all this stuff going on over here? This is going to be for your LED backlighting. You can see it's actually a very simple board. And one of the cool things about these ones is see these uh, DVI ports right here? You can actually desolder these and solder in replacements. So if they get jacked up like this one and this one, since it's just a straight port, the ones that are bent at a 90 degree are a wee bit more difficult, but the ones that are straight on, this you can see that this one right here is a 90 degree. Some, some boards will have those, but the ones that are straight on, these ones are super simple. Just use a hot air gun, 
heat it up, they pull straight out. Very simple, uh, don't use any force because you'll pull some pins that might not be molten. So those ones are very easy to fix. This is a fixable board. Mind you, when you put this together, that there are these uh, thermal pads that are throughout the board. Be very mindful of them. You see that this one here is rather sunk down. Thermal pad here. Make sure you put the thermal pad this back on this guy with its heat sink. And then that will sink heat to the back panel, which is this guy right here that we took off. So it's a very simple board, it's very fixable, and it's just one of those things a lot of people think that they just need to throw it out, but in fact, when you have problems with your ports, uh, if port one's messed up, then of course you go to port two, DVI two. If DVI two is messed up, then you can disconnect this guy or use a, a fiber adapter. Like I said, get a TX adapter. Most hospitals have them laying around. So get a TX adapter and you plug in through the uh, port that's in the front actually right there. So just use a TX on the outside of this monitor and it'll come in here or just get rid of this guy completely, connect the cable straight here, run it to the outside of your, your display and then you have a display that's back up and going. You have lots, lots of options and that's why I really like these. So that's pretty much it guys. It's, it's really not that complex. Don't change any jumper settings and uh, it's been a really good display. Not very much can go wrong with it since it is LED backlit, not the fluorescent backlit. These displays here are one of the most reliable displays I've actually worked with. Anyway guys, that's all I got for you. That's the inside of a Carl Stortz NDS display uh, with the diamond LED technology. It's a good display. I really like it and it is serviceable. You have options. Thanks for watching guys.